Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jacob over here at Titans of CNC. I just wanted to show you guys a motorcycle part that I'm actually working on for our engineer, Billy. It is a clamp so he can change the height of his uh, bars on his motorcycle. I'm gonna be making it out of 1018 carbon steel. We wanted to actually make this into an academy part for you guys so you can use it in your daily life. So this is actually like a really cool part because most people would look at this as two separate parts, uh -huh. right? But I think that the best thing that we can do is actually combine it into one part and then create a fixture that actually allows us to cut all of it, all the threads, both sides, and basically take the whole thing and drop it into another pocket, clamp it, finish this side, cut it, and take out done parts. You know what I mean? Every time the machine stops, you're basically taking out two complete parts. You're taking the part on the left side, dropping it into the right side, putting another piece of raw stock in there, clamping it, hit and go, and you get finished parts on every single one. So I like what you're saying. I'm just having trouble actually visualizing the picture itself. Can you give me like maybe a sketch of what you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just gonna, I'll pop this guy in here. Let's treat this as one part. Now, when I look at a machine, I'm always gonna look at the workspace and create a picture based on that workspace to try to get as many done as possible. In this particular operation, you're doing it to create a few parts and to teach everybody like how to get it done. So let's just have one raw piece of material go in and let's flip it over and have one part, which then you could duplicate, yeah. right? <laughs> so let's check this out. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll actually take this chunk riser right here, okay? And, and it's all art, right? So I like everything to be nice and uniform and perfect. So we'll take a piece of material, we'll cut it into a fixture, and we'll design it right around this riser, okay? So we want it to be about two, two and a half inches, have a lot of meat, keep the rigidity. So when I design fixtures, I like everything nice and seamless. I don't want any lips over here, all right? I just want it basically to come up and go straight up right there, okay? So let's actually take a measurement. And I'm actually gonna go smaller rather than big. So if I measure this guy right here, we'll just say 7.750. So this guy now sits here and then you have your riser down here boom and then we'll take these four threads right here to actually lock the fixture down and then we'll actually utilize these two dowel pin holes put two dowel pins locate it lock it down these are the dowel pins and that's it so you have so this guy will come down boom 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 however deep you need it threading perfect right inside there. Now let's actually look at, this is our fixture plate. This notepad is actually a very similar size to this guy. And since we have this 3D printed part right here, we can simply grab this guy. And what we're gonna do is basically machine this, profile it, drill it, Profile, flip up, drill and thread, flip the other way, drill, drill, and then we'll create the through hole going through for the bolt, and then we'll do the counter bore, and then later on we'll slit it when it goes to this side. So we'll have this guy over here. Basically that's how your fixture is gonna be. But on this side, we're gonna actually cut it right there. All right, so now you have your counter bore, you have your through hole, and then you have your thread down here. And then right here, you have your thread going in this way. Boom. Cut it, profile it, flip it up, flip it over, get all of it done in one operation. Take this, flip it this way, deck it, corner around these radiuses right here. And then let's actually use these angles to actually locate the part right here. So when we create the pocket down below, we'll actually have these angles in it 
and then we'll take off here to create clearance because the end mill has a circular radius right there. We'll just do something like that with whatever radius for the small tool. And then from here, we'll come over, come out, and then we'll just pocket this entire thing right here. Boom, all the way through. Same thing over here, we'll come down, pocket this entire thing, and that's it. One of the big things is when we have the raw material, which will be kind of shaped like this. Now what's cool is Mighty Byte actually has these nice little stops that you can just pop in here. So what we'll do with the material here, we'll just create one of these guys. It'll be like right here. I don't have one in front of me, but that's basically how it's shaped. It's out of tool steel, it's super hard right here. And then over here, because it's raw material, we'll actually create pit bulls. Boom, there. And we'll do these guys here. So two pit bulls right there. And now I like to do a bigger pocket right there. Something like that. So you got two pit bulls locking in against a hard steel stop right there. Locking it in place. And then over here, because we have a finished surface, we'll actually use a uniforce clamp. Since we have a saw going through here, we have to stay away from the saw. So we'll put it right here. We'll put it right here. So then you have this guy. So then we'll have this Mighty Bite locating rail right here. Maybe put a little stop somewhere around here. We can put a dowel pin just to hit the material against it. So it locks in place, locks in place. Pit bull clamps because the teeth will actually dig in and dent the material. On this side, we're using a uniforce clamp. And the reason we're using a uniforce clamp is because See how smooth it is? It's nice and smooth. So we can actually lock it inside. We're gonna create a pocket. It's gonna sit down in the pocket. This side will hit the edge of the pocket and this side will actually dig into the part, locking it from both sides. So raw material, flips over, boom. At the end, we'll basically just have this guy up here and we'll take an eighth inch saw on a nice arbor. We'll come through at a nice speed but right before we get rid of this last part right here, mm -hmm. we'll slow down the RPMs in a way and gently come out of it, which allow the part to just come off softly. If you just go through too quick, this guy will actually be thrown against the wall, damaging either the wall or the part. All right, so we'll just gently come out, boom, it'll be great. And then you take out two parts, complete, every single time the machine stops. Cool. It makes a lot more sense now that it's on paper. I think the saw will be really trick, so I like it. Yeah, no. So go ahead. You got any questions, let me know. All right? Sweet. Thank you. Make it happen, brother.